Good evening, welcome to another edition of Ambassador 5. We're here today speaking to Roma Spencer and Natalie Joseph Settle, two very experienced cultural ambassadors who've taken theatre from the Caribbean and brought it to the world stage. Welcome Natalie, welcome Roma. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Pleasure to be here. So, first of all, you know, we're really proud of you all for bringing this play to Atlanta, you know, it's, it's really inspiring to see this in this space. Yes. Um, I guess to start, start us off, let's get the audience acquainted with who you all are, give us a little bit about your background in theater and dance. Mm -hmm. Well, I started off um, in theater through Best Village. Um, the, the group I performed with was the Barataria Community Council. Um, I started with them somewhere around 19... 80 and it started off where uh, a girl who was sitting next to me in my final year at school she was a dancer with barataria and i always wanted to be in, on stage um just, but just didn't know where and how you go about doing that and having heard her being a dancer with barataria i then said to her hey i want to join barataria i want to be you know and next thing you know she she, she um she spoke to the the, the director and playwright who, who um, was responsible for uh, the presentations in Barataria. His name is Ronald Amoroso. Spoke to him and um, I was brought in and that was the very first time I performed for um, the Best Village was in um, 1981 it was. And uh, from that, um, over the years working with Best Village, I felt that I wanted more out of it. I felt that Best Village wasn't enough and I answered a, a, an ad, a TV ad, no, no, a newspaper ad where they were looking for actors for the annual drama festival that year. Um, the company was Caribbean Theatre Guild and um, the play was Minty Alley to be performed at that year's installment of drama festival at Little Carib Theatre. I went to the audition, got the part and then I started to perform that year with Caribbean Theatre Guild because as I said I wanted more out of Best Village it was, right. it was just not sufficient to perform in wait once a year to perform mm -hmm. for Best Village you come together in April for prelims then semi-finals then the finals in November right. I wanted more of that so after performing with the Caribbean Theatre Guild um, I performed uh, Minty Ali that year then the next year it was a sub play called um, a, 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 something trinity something to do with um, the plays of samuel selvan mm -hmm. and then there was there was this conflict where they those in caribbean theater guild felt that um, i was wasting too much time in best village because at that time there's this thing called legitimate theater mm -hmm. and illegitimate theater mm -hmm. and um because I was still performing in Best Village, any little flaw, anything I did wrong, it was because you're in Best Village, come out of Best Village. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's illegitimate theater. And um, I knew what I was getting out of Best Village and I'm happy that I stayed. I didn't take them on, right. <laughs> you know, I stayed with it because I'll tell you something that um, what the artist that I am today is because of Best Village. Mm -hmm. The work that I do is continuously inspired from Best Village. I would not have known any of my folk traditions of right. Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. through the legitimate theater mm -hmm. because they were doing the Derek Walker plays or the um, CLR James, the Samuel Selvan, um, which didn't do anything, uh, didn't speak to our culture. Right. So that was my beginning. So Nancy, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, as it seems, you know, Best Village is our, you know, footage that we've started off for. Mm -hmm. Malik Pope Performing Company and the Northwest Lavender again were the two top groups. And being a young performer with the Northwest Lavender for many years, which I had a good run with them, you know, performing, dancing and singing was as, you know, just a message in how to get rid of excess, you know, anxiety and a lot of excitement going on. You didn't really have a focus. But until then I get into the production and the Best Village, mm -hmm. you know, circle and I realize how dancing and acting could be really a, a good platform to stand on. Right. And with the talent that I possessed at the time, they were seeing it. I didn't see my talent. Mm -hmm. And I just kept at it the love for the music and the cultural traditions, you know, and Malik being another prominent group, I moved on because at one point Northwest had become what they had for me and as a growing artist you know you step on to different you know things and 
Malik for performing Welcome Me, and with there is where I became the assistant director for the adult company. Right. And you know, of course, seeing the potential and love for my culture, and you know, the traditions that they appointed me director for the junior company, which we had a really, really good time because we've done a lot of plays that took them international as well, our junior company. Right. And we had a whole heap of fun working with directors like Louis McWilliam and these and Northern Fullerton were great directors, you know. Mm -hmm. And they tend to see the best in you and they bring it out through the work, right. through the art form, you know, dancing and singing. So Miss Roma being a you know, a seasoned performer, I always see her on shows and stuff and always admired her. Mm -hmm. And when the opportunity came for us to be in the same production, I was like, you know, I know and I made myself known to her. You touch on something really important because we're speaking about your deep roots in the mm -hmm. Caribbean theater, mm -hmm. but yet still you've been able to expand it and introduce the world that's yes. to the Caribbean theater. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that journey, mm -hmm. moving from Trinidad, your comfort zone, and bringing theater mm -hmm. to the U.S. Well, for me, I, I'm, I'm based in Toronto, Canada, and um, I, again, always, always looking for more. Um, I felt that I had reached the top of my game in Trinidad, and I wanted to pursue now further studies in theater as a director. Because mm -hmm. I did um, um, st do um, theater arts at the UWI Creative Arts Center, and then I went on to do um, specializing directing um, in 1991. So, so after a while, I felt that I wanted more. So right. I applied to the York University in Toronto, um, to come out there to do my master's in fine arts, specializing in directing. So I came out in 1999, graduated in 2001, and I got a job offer with the African Theatre Ensemble, which is a, a theater a company that was doing African theater. Mm -hmm. um, worked with them for two years, but I wanted, again, you know, I wanted to present Caribbean theater as well. And, um, Working with the African Theatre Company was fine it, it, because it, it was very similar to what I was accustomed to in Best Village. Mm -hmm. um, the, the African theatre consists of plays with a lot of people, and it reminded me of Best, Best Village, Village, which is stage which is a stage school. of more than fifty people, right? So, so, <laughs> so I was. It was a comfort zone for me, but it was African theatre. It still wasn't speaking to me as a diasporic African. And I remember wanting to do a play called I, Marcus Garvey, which is written by a West Indian man from Montserrat, based in, Ham, in, in, in the United States. And Marcus Garvey tells the, tells the story of a Pan-Africanist Pan man. Mm -hmm. And the theater company didn't find that that was, um, was not, it, it didn't fit into their mandate. They didn't see Marcus Garvey's play as African theater. And that's when I was like, you got, Roma, you got to go. Mm -hmm. You got to form your own theater company to do the work that you want to do. Right. So I just followed their model of, um, of uh, founding a company to do Caribbean theater. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 um, the mandate was, um, theater from the Caribbean, um, from the Caribbean and its diaspora. Mm -hmm. So I was interested in work um, f in place that is written by Caribbean people in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. or place written by Caribbean people living in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So with bringing those plays to Canada mm -hmm. and to the U.S. by extension, mm -hmm. what kind of challenges did you deal with in terms of cultural nuances, people understanding the context of the plays? Well, I, I again I worked with. My company is a professional theater company. Mm -hmm. It was not amateur theater. So you're working with professional actors um, who understand what it is to do the research to arrive at how they play, play the character, right? Mm -hmm. So as much as possible, a lot of everybody, every other black person in Toronto is of Caribbean descent. If they didn't born in the Caribbean, they are second generation Caribbean person, either Jamaica, Trinidad, Antigua, mm -hmm. wherever. Mm -hmm. They, and they, especially in Toronto, they all do understand their Caribbean culture. Right. So even so, when you so sometimes I'm doing a play that, um, for instance, I Marcus, shoot an example, I Marcus Garvey. Um, most of the actors in it were of Jamaican descent. Mm -hmm. The person who played Garvey was of Jamaican descent. Even though he's very Canadian, right. but all they had to do as professional actors is harp in their research and how back to their own childhood, mm -hmm. listening and hearing how their parents spoke. Right. right? In fact, they are very Canadian, but they can just break out into a, a patois. Mm -hmm. 
right? So, so, so that it wasn't too difficult for me working with um, and finding actors to do Caribbean plays in in in, um, in Canada, in Toronto. And how um, accepted were the audiences? Very, very. As a matter of fact, um, the people who are more interested in that in the work from the Caribbean are the white people. Right. They are more interested in your work than than our people. You see. Um, in terms of the audience, I think it would have been kind of like 60% of the mainstream Canadians and 40% of the real hardcore Caribbean people. I must tell you that one of the reasons why I installed <laughs> Natalie into this production and, and kind of like have it no way, if I cannot be here, then Natalie had to be here, mm -hmm. is so that our culture stays intact. Stays intact. Right. And I will tell you this, that in, in when, when you see it on stage, especially in the movement, the choreography of the different characters, it is very, very committed. Mm -hmm. the, the performers are very committed. And you watch them and you will never think it's African-Americans. You'll think that they are truly is good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was wonderful, you know, to see them at that because during the auditions, we didn't have much... Um, time to really do much like a whole piece of choreography I just gave them a few movements and the, the response and the approach it was so willing you know that they were eager to learn mm -hmm. of something different you know something that they, not, they came out of their comfort zone and they really and I had a good relation like rapport with them you know mm -hmm. in talking about it or being a performer myself because I'm not only trying to get your bodies to do it I want you to understand what I'm asking of you right. so that we were able to you know listen to me talk you know and I did the movements very simply I simplified down as much as I could mm -hmm. that they would grasp it and they were very receptive and they did well and they even outshine me sometimes I was like hey, they know it better than me but mm -hmm. you know just to give them that confidence you know give them those type of worthing that they feel assured and confident even went so much to one of the cast members she had came on to just to do props mm -hmm. and because we asked her to do it and to tell her that yes you could man and I want you to do this and I put and she was very timid and I got very strong mm -hmm. and I'm like not because you're older you can do this mm -hmm. and up to this very moment she was so proud of me and herself she was able to walk up the stairs one two three one at a time and not one two one two one right. two because of the work and mm -hmm. you know the attitude that we put into it. Uh, yeah. she so did, she for did the audience really members who may not know, Carnival Madea is actually, this is the inaugural weekend. Um, Roma, tell us a little bit about how you see yourself as a cultural ambassador bringing that play to Atlanta. I've been with this play since 2003. Shirley, Dr. Shirley Holmes, who is a professor here, approached me with this play in 2003 because she, she was the writer. She's, she, it, it, and and Medea is a, is a classic Greek tragedy by Euripides. So she's, she had this idea about doing this play, Carnival Medea. But being a, an American woman um, from New York, living in the South here, um, she felt that um, it, there's still enough that she doesn't know. She has an idea of what it is she wants, how she wants to retell the story. but. She approached me, being a Trinidadian, to bring out a bit of what it is that she, how she wants to retell the story mm -hmm. through the language, and I mean, she she had in her head that it definitely has to do with Medea struggling with the Orishas, right? So because she did have an understanding of the Orishas, um, and and the and the 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 chorus, um, she wanted them to be these these women of Trinidad. So what I started to do is I looked at our carnival tradition and the traditional carnival characters and find the different, arch the different archetypes of these characters and see how they're going to be played out in this retelling of Medea. So I looked at Medea who obviously has, um, she's um, a woman scorned so to speak. Um, she's she's hurting over uh, infidelity, over her man, uh, over a horn, over a horn. She has a banker. Um, she's 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 going to eventually um, kill her children and that sort of thing. So I said, okay, what in which which one of our carnival characters could she be? And then it came to me, ah, baby doll. Why baby doll is because the baby doll is the character 
who approaches, in, in the traditional scheme of things, approaches any man on the street, accusing them for being the father of this child mm -hmm. that they carry in a box, a little doll, and, and they, they start a whole story. Mm -hmm. And uh, the piece of diatribe they put down on that man is to really get some money what I call doty tax <laughs> to get money to mind this child. Mm -hmm. So when you finish with a story that, that the, the baby doll puts down, you the bystander, that male bystander, feeling so ashamed, the kind of thing she just said, you want to give her money and let her go long fast, go move on. Right? So I said, okay, Midi is 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 a baby doll is a baby doll character. That's the archetype she's gonna carry. Then who then will be the the woman, um, of, Trinidad. The, the woman of Trinidad who has to be um I, I think I'll, they will be Marcos. Marco Mares and these Marco Mares will be Dam Lorenz. Mm -hmm. You know? And and the inspiration behind this Dam Lorenz thing is that if you remember good the P and M back in the day was heavily um, supported by women mm -hmm. and they used to call these women the fat ass brigade mm -hmm. and I said ah fat ass mm -hmm. damn Lauren mm -hmm. so the Marco is a, a damn Lauren um, the, the, the governor general of Trinidad um, he will be a midnight robber I always think of politicians as midnight robbers mm -hmm. you know because Oops. because that's what they do they, they, they come that's up with a speech. lot of Fancy, fancy speech, speech to get your vote yes. for election. So I always liken the politicians to, to the fans, um, mm. to the midnight rubber. And then Aegeus, um, who is from another I, um, in the in the Greek tragedy, comes from another another island in the Greek Keys. I felt that okay, Trinidad is very near to Venezuela, mm. um, Margarita even nearer. So. I will have him come from Margaret and because Venezuela is very much a communist kind of state, then all right, so fancy sailor, he right. will be a mm -hmm. coming from the military mass. So my thing was to find in, in, re in constructing the play and retelling it is taking all the characters and likening them to a traditional mm -hmm. carnival character. Right. Yeah. And one of the big thing that I was, I was um, concerned with and was really trying out is the use of our national narrative, mm -hmm. the use of our language. I felt that the play must work like one big calypso, because mm -hmm. it's carnival I'm dealing with. So I make use of the, the language of carnival, the language of, of, our, of our people that is, that is even being lost, because nowadays, you know, the, the, the language that the young people speak is, is a hodgepodge now of mm -hmm. American. Ask you this because you know this will be our last question. But you reference a few of the traditional characters mm -hmm. of Trinidad yes. that not even some of Trinidadians know. You right? Know? So, it's sad, but it's true. Yeah. Wow. So what do you think? You think so? Because we have something called Vila Coup, um and, and Carnival Friday. There's a, a particular push since I live in at home where uh, on Carnival Friday down the streets of uh, Frederick Street. There's a whole parade of traditional carnival characters. But do they participate? Mm. They who? The young people? Yeah. They may not participate, but they know it. They mm. see it. Mm -hmm. So they know it. They but may not participate. Do. But there are, there are lots of participation now. I've been seeing a lot of young people yeah, playing. Yeah, but this village that still takes place, we have our thing yeah. where they call traditions of carnival, mm -hmm. where they host this every year. Coming up to Best Village is part of all what they do, the preliminary add up for the overall winning of this grand mm -hmm. prize, yeah. prize at the end. So they have to have put on productions that includes only traditional yeah. carnival characters. Yeah, remember in, again in the competition you had to have a carnival skit. Back in, in the yeah, there were two categories yeah. where they had the theater when they had the skit, folk skit. skit. Oh, okay, so they have a folk skit mm -hmm. that will, t will cover the larger bless and lager who and mm -hmm. those characters, and you must have the. The carnival well, skit where you were able to cover your carnival well, character. So as I said, that's why I call Best Village a school of theatre. Yes, because it is teach there. you a lot. Yes, there you learn I learn all that. that. That's where I was going, like in terms yeah. of what we need to do in addition to what's already there. Yeah. What do you think are the opportunity areas to make sure our youth understand our culture? Well, for, for one thing, um, CXC now has drama. Mm -hmm. As, as, as um, a subject, oh, subject and yeah. part of it is um, part of the syllabus consists of all these carnival traditions like um, I know some students have to go to old um, mass, mass men mm -hmm. 
to learn and mass know about making. mass making and wire them. bending and how to make papi mastery. These are all old kind old traditions, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is being taught in school and they have it's part of the exam so there's something there's things that is being done um so i i, I would not be so bold to say that our young people don't know it mm -hmm. those who don't know is who don't want, want to know. yeah gotcha. they don't want yeah, to know because yeah. right now at ue they have a program where yeah. they carnival arts carnival arts and yeah. they have to when they come they have to do presentations for their class subjects mm -hmm. that they have to show where they research and know about the characters and stuff which mm -hmm. they the full characters and the carnival tradition mm -hmm. so there are outlets that which we, they are being taught and and then this viola coup which happens the sunday um the week before carnival on sunday where viola coup mean an old yard mm -hmm. and it's a it's a an exhibition it's not a competition or anything it's just an exhibition a little a little fiesta of mm -hmm. carnival old time carnival traditions, how they are played out. So, you... so this has been really, really informative. Yeah, All right. We're very grateful for your um, spending your time. Honored and happy to be involved. Thank you. Very and you're excited to see Carnival for the year? See yeah, the it's good. It's a treat. Look, we have something to look forward to. Yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, ladies. Thank Boom, you very much. Boom, Trini. Kabam. <laughs> <laughs>